irreplaceable figure in the Harlem community. He was not only uh, a spiritual leader, he was a dear friend and mentor. I say we lost the president. That's what this is like. His spirit is glorifying God. Tell him how he loves God. Seeing him at peace brought peace to me. He gave us strength. He gave us a will to fight for what we need for our community. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to CBS News New York. I'm Christine Johnson. Today, we are remembering Reverend Dr. Calvin Butts, who died just last week at the age of 73. We are expecting his homecoming celebration to begin shortly at the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem. It follows two days of public viewings. And of course, we will bring you the full service live when it begins. Here are some live pictures outside the church that you're looking at as people are still arriving, including former President Bill Clinton. We also saw Governor Kathy Hochul arriving, Reverend Butts being remembered by the countless people that he touched as a leader, a mentor, and most of all, a friend. Let's bring in Elijah Westbrook. He's live outside Abyssinia Baptist Church for us today. And Elijah, you've been covering this story since last week, and we're at yesterday's wake. What was it like outside the church today? Well, good afternoon, Christine. I can tell you there really is just an overwhelming number of people who are currently outside gathering in front of the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church, uh, waiting to pay their respects. Uh, they've been here all morning, uh, right before the sun even came up, not wanting to miss that opportunity. I'll step out of the way so you can see somewhat of what we're talking about. So this is the uh, setup right now. Again, we're standing right in front of the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church, and I've had the opportunity to speak with quite a few folks who uh, wanted to see the Reverend. Uh, one woman. I spoke to you in the morning told me that she is in the choir uh, here at the church and has been a member since 1960. So we're talking 62 years. So she's definitely someone who has a great deal of experience when it comes to Reverend Butts. And you'll hear from her in our five o'clock newscast. But she spoke to me in great lengths about how personable and kind he was. Uh, you know, many people attend the church and have cycled through uh, uh, over the years. But she kept emphasizing how kind he was to every person he met, including her. And we've been hearing so many stories that certainly resemble that. Christine. Elijah, on that point, the stories that I've heard this past week about Reverend Butts, and it was really about his ability to connect individually, not just with his parishioners, but people of all faiths around the city, even including our elected leaders. And to have that kind of following for so many years really does touch on what a remarkable man this was. Oh, absolutely, Christina. You know, people will tell you it was really about his willingness to help the community that made him such a unifying figure. Uh, he made so many connections with political leaders on the city, the state, and even the federal level, uh, especially when it came to things like education and affordable housing here in Harlem. And, you know, one of the things that Reverend Butts did was create the Abyssinian Development Corporation, a nonprofit that he helped form that funneled close to a billion dollars into residential and commercial projects. This corporation created schools, commercial development, and affordable housing. So those are just some of the things that he has done that has certainly unified the community and unified political leaders, both Democrats and Republicans. You know, if possible, I'd like to take those um, pictures from um, within the church as we keep your microphone still up to talk to you about your personal connection, Elijah, with the Reverend. Yeah, well, Christine, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. So I was actually christened here as a baby uh, at Abyssinian Baptist Church back in 1994. So we're talking 28 years ago. And if you have those pictures, let's go ahead and pull them up. And one of them, you can see him um, holding me up in front of the congregation. And some of the other pictures, you can see my family there as well as my parents. And, you know, one of the things I remember most, Christine, about the Reverend during the few times I interacted with him was his personality, uh, his willingness to help others and overall leadership. I was just 
so inspired by that. And I mentioned this yesterday on air, but I'll say it again. Revan Butts was just a household name, especially here in Harlem. Whether you love the man or not, when you heard the name Reverend Calvin Butts, you knew right away who he was. And of course, Abyssinian, the church he led for more than three decades. So he will truly be missed. And I express my deepest condolences to his family, including his dear wife and children that he leaves behind. Elijah, first of all, how cute were you as <laughs> a child and everyone? Baby Elijah, right? <laughs> adorable baptism outfit there as well. I love the hat. And clearly everyone in that yes. picture is just so full of joy. But you mentioned his family. And I'm thinking about his family today and how difficult this past week has been. And I'm sure hearing all of these wonderful stories about um, Reverend Butts has been um, nurturing and I'm sure reassuring to this family. But his 50 plus years at Abyssinian and all of the community work that he accomplished um, throughout his life, I'm thinking of all the times that they had to share him with the community. And that right. in itself, I'm sure, mm -hmm. must have been a challenge. Oh, absolutely. A uh, challenge indeed. And, you know, I haven't had the chance to speak specifically with his wife and uh, his, his children that uh, he sadly leaves behind. But you can only imagine over the years, the decades, uh, the challenges in which they had to uh, endure uh, just when he would lead the effort when it came to things here in Harlem. Again, affordable housing, uh, education, and just being a staple here at the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church uh, is quite incredible. So you can only imagine uh, what they are going through right now. But, um, just again the overwhelming number of stories that I've been hearing from people who are lined up today and just even yesterday for the first uh, wake it's just incredible some of the stories we've been hearing just a class act uh, great personality uh, kind person and um, just nothing but positive things you've been hearing about him All right, Elijah thank you so much for joining us here and we are going to pause our commentary now to join this homecoming celebration as we remember the Lord Reverend Dr. Calvin Butts. Away. The Lord is indeed our shepherd, and we shall not want. The Lord makes us to lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads us beside the still waters. The Lord guides us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley, the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. The Lord prepares the table before us in the presence of our enemies. The Lord anoints our head with oil, and our cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is the stronghold of our lives, and of whom shall we be afraid? When evil advance against us to devour our flesh. Though an army besiege us, they will stumble and fall. One thing that we ask of the Lord, and this is what we seek, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple, for in the day of trouble, the Lord will keep us safe in his dwelling place. He will hide us in the shelter of his pavilion and set us high on a rock. And though our head may be exalted above our enemies who surround us, hear our voice, O oh Lord, when we cry unto you. Be merciful and answer. Lord. Our heart says, seek thy face. Your face, Lord, we seek. Do not hide your face from us. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You are our help, O oh Lord. Though our mother and our father 
I am the resurrection and the life set at the law. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after these skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we carry nothing out. For the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taketh away. So Lord, help us to know the number of our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Love that the family is making their way in. Some are already seated. We ask that everyone would just be a little patient. Beloved, can we stand to receive this family? What a friend we have in Jesus for all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. You may be seated.
Beloved, my name is D. Darrell Griffin, and I am one of the sons of this church. In fact, pastor has charged me with the assignment of keeping the trains running. When I first came to Abyssinian, Dr. Butts uh, went, was away, and he told me to make sure that I follow the order of service and the announcements that he gave me. At that time, Deacon Haney got up to give me a piece of paper to announce something. And I told Deacon Haney I had instructions to follow that the pastor had given to me and that you had to take that up with Pastor Butts when he got back. And he said, well, D, you should have did the announcement. But I said, that's not what you told me. And so uh, I just want you to know my assignment is to keep these trains running to make sure we move through the service. The family has outlined an order of service, and we ask that all of you will be respectful of the family's wishes and even our own pastor's wishes. I know that there are people who really believe that they should be on the program and saying something and all of that. These are pastor's wishes, and if you uh, have a problem with it, take it up in glory when you get there. <laughs> We'll have eternity to talk about it. This time, we have the congregational hymn, uh, What a Fellowship. We're going to sing that. And then uh, the Reverend Dr. Derek Harkins, who is the director of the Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships from the Department of Housing, Housing and Development, and he's one of our sons, he will come and do our invocation in that order.
At one turn, this is overwhelming. But I'm glad that there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Shall we pray? Gracious and loving God, you in whom we live and move and have our being, we ask that you come by here even for a little while this day because we are your people seeking to be gathered in your presence Yes, even as we bear the weight of earthly sorrow. But yet still holding on to the blessed assurance of your uplifting and sustaining hand. In this worshipful time of sacred remembrance, hear our prayers as they are lifted up. Receive our praise as it is freely given. Let the words that are shared in loving memory of your servant, the under-shepherd of this house, our leader, and our brother, Calvin Otis Butts III, let those words give honor to him as we give thanksgiving to you for his life, a life that your hand shaped and crafted as you allowed him to abide with us and to strive for us on the vanguard of liberating love and justice. In this moment, let your presence bring comfort and a loving care that embraces the Butts family, this gathered body of believers, the Abyssinian Baptist Church, and so many near and far, who can bear testimony of the godly fervor and faithfulness of your standard bearer. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And in you we rejoice because the good fight has been fought the race has been run, the faith has been kept. We beseech you now, O oh God, to be with us in this moment, and yet even in the days and months ahead. Spur on in us the desire to live a life that even faintly reflects what was proclaimed from this pulpit and what was embodied in the actions in our midst. Guide us, sustain us, and receive unto yourself your servant and your son. We offer this prayer in the name of our Savior, even Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, and amen.
Wow. <laughs> this time, beloved, uh, Reverend Dr. Marvin Bentley is going to come. He's the pastor of Antioch Baptist Church of Corona. He's also a son of Abyssinian. For our New Testament, the Reverend Dr. Violet Deese Lee, who is executive program minister for Christ Church, United Methodist Church. She's also a daughter of Abyssinian. And then for... And then for the prayer of comfort, Reverend Dr. Ebony Marshall Turman is going to come. She's an associate professor of theology and African-American religion at Yale School of Divinity and also a daughter of Abyssinian. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then after that, we'll have a song from uh, Sister Eunice Newkirk. Mrs. Butts, Calvin, Alex, Pat, our prayers are with you and the entire Butts clan. Psalm of David 27. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though the war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait I say on the Lord continuing in prayer for this family and especially in this moment Kyla Calvin V Reed Alex Arthur Ethan and now the second letter of Paul to Timothy for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, 
shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, let every heart say, thanks be to God. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. May I thy consolation share. Till from Mount Pisgah's lofty heights, I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh, I'll drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Shall we pray? Truth is, Lord, that he was everything to us. And that's why on this day we are so grateful to gather in your name to celebrate the life of Calvin Otis Butts III, a life so well lived. We're grateful, Lord, for the privilege of gathering together to celebrate, to rejoice in a life so well lived. He was everything to so many of us. But above all, he was a husband to one wife of over 51 years. His beloved, Patricia Reed Butts, he was a father to three children who he adored. My brother Calvin the Fourth, and my brother Alexander, and my sister, my sorrow, Patty. Above all else, he was a grandfather to six grandchildren who he loved. Kyla and Alex Jr. and Calvin V and Arthur and Reed and Ethan. He was everything to us. God, he he was our pastor. He was our counselor. God, he was our teacher. God, he was your servant. He was your disciple. But he was our freedom fighter. He was our accomplice in love and struggle. He taught us how to be black and proud and Christian. He was everything to us. He was my father in ministry. He was everything to us. He was a giant among men. 
the best of Morehouse manhood. He was a global icon. He was everything to us. And so on this day, we come with heavy hearts. We come with tears of sorrow because of who he was, all that he did for this church, for this community, for his family, for this world. And even though he was everything to us, we recognize that he belonged to you. Paul said it like this, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. We pray now, O oh God, that after a long fight with cancer, that he has found rest. Oh, he did not know how to rest. Oh God, he didn't know really what Sabbath was, but we pray that this man, this man of God who worked and worked and worked while it was day, now is resting in you. We pray that he is in that place where there is no more death. There is no more sorrow. There are no more tears. I've been told there every day is Sunday and the Sabbath has no end. We pray that as he enters in, the heavenly choir is singing. Seraphim and the cherubim uh, are singing hymns of glory. Lord, for those of us who remain, we don't know what we are going to do, but Reverend Butts taught us about a man named Jesus. A man who said, let not your heart be troubled. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So we turn to Jesus right now. And we ask that Jesus would be merciful to this family that Jesus would send angels of comfort and angels of mercy to surround them and lift them up when all the people go home, when all the calls stop, when the cards stop, that this family will turn to you, O oh God, that they might, might remember that you are God all by yourself and that you will continue to hold them in the hollow of your hand. We pray for this congregation, O oh God, clarity. We pray for this congregation, oh God, courage, that in the face of, uh, Dr. McNichol said, trouble, oh God, we might keep the faith. And we pray for this village of Harlem, for Reverend Butts, Calvin Otis Butts III was indeed our prince. We pray, oh God, that you would hold us together, that we would remember, remember that he called us to grow taller every day in your grace, that we would stick together, that we might even fight the powers that be, and that we would hold to your unchanging hand. We love you, Lord, and we thank you we thank you for this life, our pastor, our brother, our friend, our mentor. We thank you, God, and offer this prayer in the name of Jesus and always for his sake. And the people of God said, amen. amen.
can help somebody as a If I can cheer somebody with a word, a word of song, if I can show Thank you, Father, my living has not been in vain. If I can If I can help somebody as a Christian, a Christian, oh, and if I can.
can help somebody Hallelujah. If I can help somebody, my Lord. This time, beloved, we have uh, some remarks. And for those who are giving remarks and reflections and all of that, let me give you just the little ground rules. <laughs> we do have someone who can sing, so when you get up, you don't have to do that. We do have someone who is capable of doing the eulogy, so you do not have to preach that. And I ask that you can't tell it all. Now, many of us know that Pastor was sick a long time, so anything that we wanted to say to him, we had the opportunity to do that. So that I ask that we would be strong, but not long. And I'm serious because the family, this is difficult for all of us. And we watched what happened in Detroit a couple of years ago. And we do not want that to happen here. You'll catch that on your way home. At this time, for some brief remarks, I'm going to call upon our 42nd president, William Jefferson Clinton. Um, hold on, hold on, before you do this, I'm gonna do this, oh, I'm gonna call everybody's name and they will come in order. My job is to keep the trains running. All right. President Clinton will come and then uh, Chuck Schumer, who is the U.S. Senator and our so, so also the Senate Minority Leader, he, I mean, majority leader. We are people of faith, so we believe God's going to do it. Amen. Also, Eric Adams, who's the 110th mayor of the city of New York. Following uh, Mayor Adams will be the Reverend Dr. Carl Washington, who's president of the Empire Baptist Missionary Convention, and also the pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Following uh, Pastor Washington will be Dr. Cheryl Dudley, and she is the regional executive minister of American Baptist Churches of Metro New York. They will come in that order, and they will be brief.
to the Butts family and all assembled. And Pastor, I was at Aretha Franklin's funeral. <laughs> It was wonderful, but we got it. I talked to Reverend Butts not long before he passed, and by then we had been friends a long time. I, I came here seeking his support in this hollowed place, and I didn't get it the first time. And then when I won, he said, you know, you have to remember, this is an active church, and I have an active faith. And the book of James says that faith is fine, but without works, it's dead. <laughs> so I will know your faith by your works. And he said that in so many words to a lot of us. And in the power of his living example, he demonstrated his faith by his wonderful words from this sacred pulpit, but also by his works. The last time I was here, we said, Farewell to Cicely Tyson. And he said, oh, you should come and talk because you're good at this. I'm not good at this today. <laughs> I miss Calvin Butts. I wanted him to live to be 90, 100, 110. I wanted him to keep telling us we have to save people, not reject them. We have to convert people, not cancel them. We have to build, not tear down. We have to lift up. Oh, yes, he could be blunt and tough, but he had a beautiful spirit. He, and I learned a lot from him, and I'm grateful for everything. I also occasionally took orders. <laughs> Once he called and said, you know, in addition to Abyssinia, and I am the president of SUNY at Old Westbury, and here's what I need you to do. <laughs> I want you to be in such and such a place at such and such a date, and I want, here's what I want you to say. <laughs> and uh, I saluted and showed up. So today, we salute and show up. A man we love, a man we admire. And all I can say is, he's up there now with the Lord, whose eye is on the sparrow. So you know he's watching you. And his sermon would be, your turn. I did my best. And what a best it was. He was a beautiful man with a rich life. He knew how to be strong and tender. And now he's saying, I'm watching you. Thank you. Thank you, friend, father, grandfather, husband, pastor. Thank you for touching us all. Thank you for having enough love for a vast sea. And thank you for being tough with that love when you needed to be. We are grateful for the whole ride. And we wish you Godspeed, and we're glad you're going home.
Good afternoon to the church. Good afternoon. Now we're gathered here today to commemorate the life of a great man, a truly great man. A great educator, a great theologian, a great man of faith, a great leader of his community, the Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III. Our heart goes out to his family, to Patricia, his wife, to Deacon Calvin and Alexander, to his daughter Patricia, to his six grandkids, and I want to say a special shout out to Kyla, who worked for me. <laughs> and when Kyla, when I told your dad what a good job you did, how smart and dedicated and well-liked you were, he was beaming. And to the wider family, and there's one other person I'd like, with your permission, Pastor Griffin, to introduce. <laughs> Pastor Griffin mentioned that I was the minority leader by mistake. <laughs> Wait, I am the majority leader because of a disciple of Pastor Butts, an associate pastor of this church, somebody who is and will continue to be the senator from the great state of Georgia, Raphael Warnock. sit down. <laughs> now, to all of these souls that the pastor touched from the pulpit here at Abyssinia, to all of the young minds he cultivated at SUNY Old Westbury out on Long Island, Dr. Butts had a positive and indelible impact on all of those he encountered, that the fruits of his labor can be found throughout our city, our state, our nation. I spoke to him a few weeks ago regarding attending his 50th pastoral anniversary here at Abyssinian, which was to be celebrated Sunday, November 13th. Unfortunately, we're gathered a little sooner on a much sadder occasion. But even on that last phone call with him, while it was clear to me that he had been weakened due to his illness, I could still feel the strength of his spirit, of his heart, burning like a beacon as bright and strong as ever. You see, throughout my career, I relied on Dr. Butts as a source of counsel and spiritual guidance. I would call him for advice, and as typical of him, he would listen thoughtfully, carefully, and then he would respond. And when he responded, you could always count on Pastor Butts to be honest. <laughs> Pastor Butts was a truth teller. He was one of the great truth tellers of our entire generation. He always told the truth because it was deeply rooted in his faith. His faith was at the core of his truth telling. And he was unapologetic about the truth. As I'm sure so many of us know in this room, in this great church, Pastor Butts would tell you the truth even if it wasn't easy for you to hear the truth. <laughs> Pastor Butts told the truth, Pastor Butts, and he certainly didn't mind ruffling a few feathers if it served the cause of truth and justice. That didn't stop him that he'd ruffle your feathers. Oh, no. He told the truth even when America wasn't ready to hear the truth. Even when New York City was not ready to hear the truth, he told it. He told it like it was. But he always told the truth in a very special way, a profound and brilliant way. Those were not just words he spoke when he spoke the truth. They were not just blunt instruments, oh no. They were carefully crafted thoughts, wrapped in both passion and compassion. He spoke the truth to power with the rare consistency and moral clarity that is testament to the man he was. Oh yes, Dr. Butt spoke truth to power. And in doing so, he became a powerful force for racial justice. He became a powerful force for societal justice. And he became a powerful force 
for positive change for his beloved church here at Abyssinian, for his community here in Harlem, for New York, and for America. And as I stand before you remembering the truth of the life of Reverend Calvin Butts, I'm reminded of that old hymnal, glory, glory, hallelujah. It speaks to the glory of God, but it also speaks to the glory of Dr. Butts. I'm gonna take a liberty, Pastor. Join me. <laughs> glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching. trouble because pastor would be looking at me like I know he didn't just do that <laughs> before the mayor mayor Adams comes our governor is here governor Kathy Hochul is going to come with <laughs> governor for the state of New York is going to come with some brief remarks That is the worst speaker I've ever had to follow in my life. I cannot <laughs> sing. Senator Schumer, I am not going to attempt to outdo that, but kudos to you, sir. Uh, and to have President Clinton here, a reminder of a time when people did work together. And I will never give up on that time. I was a young staffer for Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan, a chance to work with Charlie Rangel and others, the leaders. I believe we can get back to that America. Do you believe that as well? I want to get back to that America. Let's bring it all back together. And to have my other leaders in government, our mayor, our great attorney general, Tish James, our visiting senator from Georgia, the majority leader maker, right, sitting right there. I'll be so brief, but I have to tell you, as governor just one year ago, the very first church I came to, literally just days after I became the governor of the state of New York, I came here because I knew that the place that was so steeped in history, a place where people created leaders, elected leaders, spiritual leaders, community leaders, was always in this church. And I knew that because I came here and worshiped as lieutenant governor, but as a governor I needed the spiritual blessing of Reverend Dr. Calvin Butts. I knew if I had his blessing, and he literally put his hands on me and he says, we will pray for you. We will pray for your success. We will pray for your wisdom. And I want you to know what that meant to me in that moment. And I literally came back to this church the week he passed because I knew he was slipping away. But I didn't want to lose that sense that he gave me, that sense of empowerment that I needed from him. And to the family, we sit here and look at an empty chair on this altar, but I know you have to look at an empty chair at the dinner table going forward. And, and to have the love of your life, Patricia, for 51 years, you are truly soulmates, soulmates, indivisible, indivisible. 
And I just want to tell you, I feel the pain in this room from the family, the children. I lost my mother not that long ago before she never had a chance to see me become governor. But as much as it feels like a beautiful candle went out, that we had this beautiful light that was an inspiration for people in this city, in this community, beautiful Harlem and across America, I want you to know that light did not go out. Calvin Butts would want us to rekindle that light and walk out of this room with that light, that candle lit in our hands as we march forward into the world to try to bring that light to other people. And we can do that. We can do that in his name, and that is how he lives on through all of us, as well as through his children. So we will be back. This will continue to be that place, that sanctuary that those of us in public life draw upon. We need to come down, be with the people, and say, we are God's humble servants going forward. But with all of you and your prayers, I thank you for giving us the gift of this man in this beautiful place. Patricia, our love and our prayers to all of you and your family. God bless all of you, and God bless the state of New York, and God bless the greatest place on the earth, the United States of America. Thank you all. sitting here looking at the photo and thinking about how just of a good heart Dr. Butts had. But I don't know if it's lost on you, but this is a good looking brother. <laughs> 73. He personified what we say in the community, good black don't crack. <laughs> and in my, in my brevity, I only think of one story that just really personifies the moment. You know, I start this ritual every morning. Uh, and I have a cup of, bowl of oatmeal, I put a little cream in it. And I thought I forgot my grocery shopping, so I ran to the fridge, and to my happiness, there was, the cream was there in the fridge. Grabbed it, it was half full. Then I looked at the expiration date. <laughs> it was spoiled. It's an analogy to our lives. We all have an expiration date. We're all going to reach a moment where we're going to transform from the physical to the spiritual. Nothing is more tragic of a Shakespearean proportion than to be half full, to leave your best game in the carton, and hoped on that day that you would have used all of you. There's only th one thing I'm sure of. There wasn't a drop left. And Dr. Buck. And, and some would say, but only 73, 73, that's so young. Jesus was 33 by some scholars. And he commanded that we split history into BC and AD. So this is an A.D. moment. What are we going to do after the transition and death of Reverend Calvin Butts? We are eight days A.D. How are we going to treat each other differently? How are we going to be Butts-like? How are we going to use our lives so when someone comes and give us our eulogy, they won't have to be creative or a creative writer? <laughs> they could just tell the truth. I remember in my darkest moments, 
During the days of 100 blacks in law enforcement who care, fighting to end police abuse. I remember studying to become a lieutenant and someone pulled up next to my car and shot out my, shot out my car windows after calling out my name. And I remember speaking to Reverend Butts. And he said, now it's time for you not just to read, but to believe. I remember going to testify in federal court to stop police misconduct and overproliferation of stop and frisk and hearing Dr. Butts. I remember when music was demonizing black women in our community and he came with that big construction roller and rolled over the CDs. And long before people were talking about don't advertise alcohol and cigarettes in our community to harm our community, he had a white roller brush painting over the posters and said, lock me up if you want to, because I'm going to stand on truth. But let me conclude with this. I hope it wasn't lost on all of you. It is one thing to talk about what you did individually, but did you hear all the places the disciples ha have gone inside the city and country and the roles they're playing? You might as well call my administration Abyssinian. <laughs> Sheena Wright, my deputy mayor, David Banks, my chancellor, deputy mayor Ann Williams Isom. was look down the directory of Abyssinian and found the best. I love him. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. There's a, there's a hole in my heart that I don't think will heal for a long time. And Sister Butts, we're going to lift you up in prayer. You know how challenging this moment is. It is for all of us. But nowhere in the contract of life does it say it's immortality is part of the deal. We're all mortal. And I can rest assured in all my heart, all of the elected officials in this room, he loved, but he adored me. <laughs> James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. And we're here on this early afternoon to celebrate a gift called Calvin O. Butts III. To Lady Patricia Butts and children of Dr. Butts, Calvin IV, Alexander, and Patricia, to his grandchildren, to the official family known as the Abyssinian Baptist Church, to all elected officials present, to all clergy members from around the country, I greet you today in the name of Jesus. No, that name that is above every other name. That name that allows us at this moment to be able to sit and to celebrate the life of Dr. Butts. To our presider, Dr. Griffin, and to our celebrant, Dr. McMickle, I was asked by Sister Graham first to bring greetings on behalf of Dr. Jerry Young and the National Baptist Convention called and conveyed, Calvin, his deep Lady Patricia love to you at this moment in this space and time. 
He wants you to know the invaluable person Dr. Butts was to the National Baptist Convention as he served as chairman of election commissions and served as wisdom and guidance as our national body moved forward. I was asked to speak on behalf of the United Missionary Baptist Association. Our moderator is here, Dr. Lowe. If you and United would stand at this moment, amen. The members of the United Baptist Missionary Association, Dr. Butts, with all he did, with all he did, made sure he participated in the things in this community that many preachers of his stature would never participate in. And so we thank God for him and for the life he lived. And then the first woman elected to the Baptist Ministers Conference, Reverend Geraldine Harris, and the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity, Reverend Harris, would you stand along with the members of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity. Dr. Butts was instrumental in women being allowed to join the Baptist Ministers Conference. Indeed, indeed, we are, are grateful. We are grateful. On June 21st, 2021, because when Naomi called me, she said, Carl, I want you to speak on behalf because we, for the brevity of time. And she said, I want you to speak for Empire, National, United, and the Ministers' Conference. On June 21st, 2022, Dr. Butts called me. I was in Jackson, Mississippi. And when I looked at the call, Lady Butts, I was kind of shocked because I hadn't talked to him in a good while. And he called me and he said, Carl, I just want you to know it was 9 o'clock at night that I'm proud of you. He said, I just listen to your address as Dean of the National Baptist Convention. And I want you to know I'm proud of you. That's the type of person Dr. Butts was. He, he wanted you to know when you did a job well that you had done the job well. But then on September 30th, I received my last call from your husband, your father, your grandfather. 4.30 in the afternoon, as I was sitting in Albany, New York, in a hotel room, waiting for the wedding of Dr. Duke's daughter, Dr. Butts called me. He said, Carl, how you doing? I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing okay, and I'm ready. I said, you doing okay, and you ready? He said, yeah, I want it just to call you and talk to you. Plato says this, that human nature flows from three sources, desire, emotions, and knowledge. The desire of everyone present is that God would have let Dr. Butts remain until. But God brought him to unto. The, the, the emotions in this place at this moment have brought tears to the eyes of many as we have past clinics down roads because of the love we had for this man. But we showed up because there's something about this moment that will move us to a new place 
We know that the knowledge of this moment for the believer is when the earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, I've got another building, not made by hand, but eternal in the heavens. Dr. Griffin, is there any more time left? <laughs> uh, to Mrs. Butts, um, to the children, Calvin and Patricia, Deacon, and to each of you, my heart aches with you um, because beloved, as you know, and respected Calvin Otis Butts so much and our hearts need a place to release some of that ache. As has already been said, that's why we're here today. And that's why we are, have been here this week. And that's why countless numbers of conversations have happened amongst different people since we heard that he passed. Now, Baptists are all related to each other. And Dr. Washington just represented, it, represented four groups of Baptists. I'm here representing the American Baptist churches. And some of the same folks are also American Baptists. So if you're an American Baptist, raise your hand. Amen. We're not that distant from one another. American Baptist ministers and pastors meet by Zoom every Wednesday morning. What happens in our meeting stays in that meeting. And, but I don't think it would be a betrayal to let you know or outside of our covenant to say that we spent a couple of days ago, Wednesday, remembering Dr. Calvin Otis Butts honoring him and telling stories and some lies. <laughs> some quite funny. We blessed him. We gave him grace. And we coached each other into understanding a bit about this man called Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III. Some in that meeting were sons and daughters of Dr. Butts. Others only knew him from a distance, yet revered him. But all of us wanted in that community to acknowledge him in some way, to honor him and to release him so that, so that those who are left behind will have a little bit of peace. I considered Dr. Butts a friend and a brother. We had a real relationship, I think. He would take my calls, <laughs> or he would call me back swiftly if he couldn't answer when I called at the time. We would sometimes pray together. We had some very tender times in prayer. We would wish each other happy birthday, which was easy because our birthday is on the same day, <laughs> July 19th. I'm much younger than him, though. <laughs> this past birthday, he sent me a greeting two days early, saying, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. So happy birthday to you, and he would call me Bishop, <laughs> kind of tongue in cheek. A few days after our birthdays, he called me to rail me for not having wished him <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> and I said, didn't you get my card, brother? 
And he said, well, I haven't been at home that much, and so I will get to it. In a few days, I'll have to look for it. I would text Dr. Butts weekly to check on him. One of the last texts I received from him, he sent simply the word peace, uppercase exclamation point, peace. Now, those of you who know him a bit know that he was a nuanced man, and so still wanted to exegete every letter of that text. What did he mean by peace? Was he saying, let me have some peace, woman? <laughs> or was he saying, I am at peace? Maybe both. This great man was a boabab tree. A tree of life that stands tall, that keeps water in its trunks in dry seasons, that has healing properties. Some construct homes from the hollow of that trunk. And so today we honor that Boabab named Calvin Otis Butts, who is now laid down, who stood tall, who hydrated and fed so many of us, and continue to provide a home for so many here in Harlem and beyond. And so let me say on behalf of the American Baptist Churches of Metropolitan New York, our president, the Reverend Dr. Emma Jordan Simpson, my colleague, Dr. Singleton, who is here, and 180 sister churches, as well as the constellation of Baptists and others in many other places that we honor him and so with these words that will be a part of our record, please receive these. Whereas the Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III, who served God and community at the Abyssinian Baptist Church for 50 years, beginning in 1972, and took on the garment of senior pastor in 1989, whereas Dr. Butts unapologetically believed in the redeeming and transforming love of God and proclaimed it, calling others to faith in Christ Jesus. And whereas Dr. Butts curated a vision and context for African-American life, where persons might thrive, live in dignity, reach for excellence, and celebrate individual and community achievements in Christian community, and whereas the Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III was willing to be a branch in helping others experience fuller social economic standing, education, justice, racial, gender, and identity inclusion, and whereas Dr. Butts was a man who loved his people deeply and served them tenaciously, and did not want to let us down or let us go. We commend our dear brother to the care and keeping of our creator. He is now in God's everlasting realm, the place where Jesus went to prepare for us. Calvin Otis Butts III, take now your place among those who have gone on before you. Enjoy this abiding community where one day we also hope to live. You have earnestly believed and served God well, and you have been welcomed home. It is there we believe your spirit heard the word spoken to the faithful across the ages. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Beloved, at this time, we have a special presentation by actress and playwright Latanya Richardson Jackson and multi-award winning actor Courtney B. Vance are going to come with a special presentation.
Hello, hello, family. Hello, hello. <clears throat> hello, family. Thank you for this opportunity. I know I only have a minute, only 60 seconds, and it forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give it account for it, if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but all of eternity is wrapped up in it. Um, good afternoon, Abyssinian family. Uh, Miss Patricia, family, our, our prayers are with you all. God bless you all. Miss Latanya Jackson and I bring you greetings from Presiding Bishop Emeritus Charles Edward Blake and First Lady Mayo Blake and the entire West Angeles family and community. We just want to share with you this afternoon. Is that all right? It's all right? All right. I, too, sing, America. I am the darker brother and sister. They send me to, the, to eat in the kitchen when the company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when the company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, sing America. Langston Hughes, 1926. We wear the mask. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and, and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but, oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing. But, oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, 1896. I first met Calvin Butts, when I was 18 years old, and we were both freshmen in college, he had more house than me in Spelman. He was bopping across the campus, a revolutionary and a dashiki. He, he came from New York with the words of Mao, Imamu Baraka, and H. Rap Brown. We all knew that Calvin was destined, Cobb three, was destined to be a great statesman, we thought, politician or gangster. <laughs> and I think because he fell in love with Patricia Butts, his trajectory changed. <laughs> She ushered him on a path of righteousness, which took him to God. And for that, we stand here today forever grateful that we can call him the Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts. Calvin loved God. He loved his wife and his children. He loved this church, he loved the arts, and always supported them, which is why Courtney and I get to stand here today and do a poem. My husband Sam and I will always be grateful that Calvin could be counted on in an audience of any play that we were doing. So, The Negro Speaks of Rivers by Langston Hughes, 1921. I've known rivers. I've 
have known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the golden sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. We love you. Thank you so much.